Netherite is the best and last upgrade to your tools and armor, but in the 1.20 update, the process has been changed. And luckily, it's still not hard to get. Netherite is crafted with four gold ingots and four netherite scrap and a crafting table, but to get the netherite scrap, you need to smelt down one piece of ancient debris in a furnace. With the ingot in a smithing table, combine it with a piece of diamond armor or tools with a smithing template. However, the smithing template can only be crafted if you find one first in the nether and then duplicate it with seven extra diamonds apiece. Meaning to get a full set of netherite gear, you need 40 ancient debris and 63 diamonds. But before I show you how to do all that, I just want to say that only 1.3% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing as it's free and it really helps me out. Now when you're mining for ancient debris, the biome you mine in actually matters just a little bit. The crimson forest and the basalt biomes are the two biomes you want to avoid mining in in the nether. The reason why you want to avoid these two is that in the crimson forest, hoglins can spawn in your mine and they can actually sneak up behind you and take you out pretty easily. While in the basalt, there's a lot of hard blocks and a lot of the mining methods that we're going to go through in this video are going to struggle in this biome and it'll just slow you down, so it's just better to find somewhere else to mine. The first method for finding ancient debris that we're going to talk about is going to be strip mining. The strip mine you're going to need at least an efficiency 2 diamond pickaxe or an efficiency 3 iron pickaxe. While with the diamond pickaxe, make sure you have unbreaking and mending, while with the iron pickaxe, you just have a lot of them. You do still need a diamond pickaxe to mine the ancient debris though. A few stacks of blocks, but you'll get that while you're strip mining, and make sure this is very important you have a source of food. Once you have all that, you're going to want to head down to Y level 15. This can be the best mining level when you are strip mining. And you're going to want to start off by making a long corridor like this. And then you want to go inside and on the left or the right side of the wall, doesn't really matter. You're just going to go ahead and start strip mining. While you're strip mining, you're also going to want to put some blocks in your offhand because if any lava pops up like this, you can easily block it off. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Ah! Once you feel like you've shipped mine far enough, go to the side away from your other tunnels and mine in three blocks like so. And then on the third block right here, you're just going to mine back. This is going to allow you to find any agent debris that might be hiding in between your tunnels like this right here. One of the biggest concerns while strip mining is pickaxe durability, but if you do have unbreaking and mending, there's a ton of cores that you will find, and even these little gold nuggets right here that you will find that also repair your pickaxe. Bed mining is one of the most common ways to look for ancient debris, as it's cheap in materials and still yields a good amount of ancient debris. Everything that you're going to need for this is at least a diamond pickaxe to mine the agent debris, a set of iron armor to protect the durability of your main set, a bunch of building blocks, a food source, and of course, a lot of beds. While you do this, you want to make a little strip mine, and then on the right side, you're going to mine two blocks on your head level, place your down your bed, and make sure you're around this block over here, and then right click it, and it will explode a large area. I highly recommend also making a straight path that goes through your mine so that it's really easy to go back and forth while you are doing this. In between each little punk you're going to want to mine in four blocks like so, and then on the right side head level once again, you're going to mine two blocks, place down your bed, and explode. And as you can see, we found a piece of ancient debris right here. Also, make sure you're punching out all the fire that is on the ground, because sometimes the ancient debris will light on fire, like this right here, when you are exploding the beds. Now, while you're mining, you're going to run into lava. And one quick thing to make sure there's no ancient debris behind it, you can check it by using the F3 menu. On the right side, you can see where it says target block, and it says Minecraft Netherrack. That is the block that I'm currently looking at through the lava right now. And if I were to make my way over to the left, it's then going to change to Minecraft Ancient Debris, and that means that there is ancient debris right there. And if I go ahead and mine this wall, what do you know? There it is. And I would have missed it if I didn't check. However, there is a way to get even more ancient debris faster if you have the materials. TNT mining is one of the fastest ways to find ancient debris. You're going to need the essentials from the previous mining methods. And of course, you're going to need at least a stack of TNT to really make this worth it and some flint and steel. Then you're just going to go ahead and you're going to start strip mining. And you're going to want to mine out probably around 800 blocks. Another calculation you can do to figure out how long your strip mine needs to be is multiplying the amount of TNT you have by four. Once you feel like you've mine far enough, place down your first piece of TNT, and then every four blocks, so one, two, three, and four, place down another piece of TNT, and repeat this process through the entire strip mine. Once you have all that place, just go ahead and light up the TNT, and you can watch as the whole thing just explodes. If the TNT does fall out of render distance, it will end up stop exploding, so make sure you just stay in the render distance of the TNT as it goes off, and you're just slowly going to be uncovering a bunch of ancient debris as you just travel down your path. But before I show you the most broken mining method, give me a moment of your time to talk about my sponsor, Apex Hosting. Apex Hosting provides high quality lag free service for a good price, as well as offering 24 7 customer support, two click to install plugins, and if it's your first month, you can get 25% off. Check them out with my link in the description below or use the code REALJADEN at checkout.
With a little bit of ancient debris and a two minute video, you can build this tunnel board made by Misty Cat. The tunnel board works with the engine here, which when you click this note block, pushes the entire machine forward. It then will go ahead and light and duplicate this TNT at the same time, sending it onto the ancient debris where it'll blow up a nice little area. You do have to use ancient debris as ancient debris is the only block that is unbreakable with explosives, but still can be pushed by pistons. Using this, now you only need one piece of TNT and you can still mine pretty dang far into your world. The only thing that sucks about this is it is a little bit slower as you do have to wait for every piece of TNT, but I think it's worth it because you're not using any materials. One of the most fun ways to actually mine for ancient debris is by using end crystals in the nether. Because end crystals don't break downwards, not only is it a great way to mine, but it's also a good way to clear out an even space. All you gotta do is place one piece of obsidian like so with an end crystal on top, then place a block in front of the end crystal so that you don't take too much damage, and then you can punch it and it clears out a pretty large area. Go ahead and mine up your obsidian if you need to, but if you have a lot of obsidian like I do right now, I will just leave it and just continue going. Go five blocks into the wall and then repeat the same process, placing on your piece of obsidian with the end crystal on top. And I think it's pretty satisfying to see the floor looking like this. Now taking everything that we've learned in this video, we can now make everything just a little bit more effective with one simple trick. If you press F3 plus G in the Java version of the game, you'll see these little lines like this. And basically, this is where a chunk is. And when mining on the edge of them, you can actually uncover more diamonds than if you were just mining in the middle of a chunk. And this is important because Shulkercraft found out that if you mine on the edge of a chunk, you actually get more ancient debris than if you mine in the middle. But this doesn't just stop at strip mining. It works for bed mining, TNT mining, and even the tunnel bore. But now there's one more thing you need before you can get a netherite ingot. A third of the netherite process is finding the smithing template. Smithing templates are only found in the nether in a bastion. However, there are four different types of bastions that spawn. The bridges, hoglin stables, housing units, and the treasure room. And the templates only spawn in the treasure room. In the chest, you can also find ancient debris and netherite scrap as well, which will save you a ton of time in the future. If you want a really quick way to find bastions, go to your options and then your FOB slider, turn it all the way down to 30. Then go ahead and open up your F3 menu. And if you see an abnormal spike in your E counter that takes up, you know, like around half of the entities in that area, that means that there is a bastion likely there. So like over here, I have a spike of 20 out of 60 entities in this one direction. And then they run over here, there's a bastion right here. An even easier way to find a bastion is by doing slash seed in your world, comping that seed, and heading over to the Chunk Base website. I'll have a link to it in the description below. Where it says seed, make sure you go ahead and type in seed and then set your version to the correct version. If it's Java, choose the Java version, or if you're on Bedrock, you can choose Bedrock. And then go to the Nether. This will show you all the structures that are in the Nether. You're going to want to look for the piglins that have a treasure chest on them, like this one right here, which will be the treasure room. When you get a smithing template, you need to save it because each smithing template only has one use. However, you can duplicate them with seven extra diamonds a piece. Now you're going to only need one more thing in the netherite process, which is going to be actually the diamonds. And I have the perfect video for you. Check out the video on the screen now if you want to know the fastest way to find diamonds in the 1.20 version of Minecraft. And with that, don't forget to like the video and subscribe, and I hope you have an amazing day. Peace.